Okay, whatever you think, this is a pretty awesome device. What it is, is a stove top fan. You stick it on top of your stove and what it does is blows the concentrated hot air that's around the stove around the room and it makes more efficient use of your stove. How it does that is with this thing. This is a little thermoelectric generator sandwiched between the foot plate and some radiating fans. And it produces electricity that drives the fan. The foot plate's surprisingly important. It makes sure that the generator doesn't get too hot and the fins keep everything nice and cool. Because these things, it's the temperature difference that matters. So you can have one side at 50 and either 100. You've got a temperature difference of 50 degrees and that will work. Of course, they are manufactured things, so they have their own limitations. If you put this straight on top of your stove, which is somewhere between 300 and 400 degrees centigrade, you'll just burn it out because this particular one, its maximum temperature that you can cope with, is about 150 degrees centigrade. Between those two white ceramic plates are a whole lot of semiconductors of N and P type joined up in series. Now if we apply a current to this, then one side will get hot and one side will get cold, and that's called the Peltier effect. If we reverse the current, we'll also reverse the sides that get hot and cold. But what's really cool about this is if you make one side hot and one side cold, so you have a temperature difference, what it will do is generate, and that's called the Seebeck effect. So the Peltier effect is responsible for thermoelectric cooling and the Seebeck effect is responsible for thermoelectric generation and they are reversible. So you can use a thermoelectric cooler to generate or you could use a thermoelectric generator to cool if you so wanted. But of course they have their own limitations depending on how they were made. So have a look at these. Can you tell which is which? Actually, it's pretty tough unless it says on it or you happen to look up the part number. Actually, they're all TEGs, except for the middle one. Unfortunately, the differences are all inside and they concern lapping, element size, the solder and how it's all put together. Lapping is really to do with thickness. The problem with Peltier modules is that thickness isn't exact and that doesn't matter with cooling applications because they usually require one module on the same surface. But with generation, what you often see are lots of modules put together and if not the same thickness, then the distribution of heat or cooling on either surface isn't very exact, which is why when people make these things with lots of Peltier modules, the output tends to be pretty disappointing. The power output will depend on the weakest module in the link if you connect them in series. So if you connect a whole bunch together expecting 27 volts and only getting 10 volts out, that's because one of them isn't touching the surfaces properly. Now TEGs are always lapped, whereas thermoelectric coolers aren't, unless you specifically ask for them to be lapped. The second important consideration is element size. What I mean by element size is an element is one couple and a couple is one p-type and one n-type joined together. So in a thermoelectric cooler of say 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, you'll get something like 170 couples. In equivalent size thermoelectric generator, you'll get about 70 couples. And that's because they have to handle more amps as you generate more amps, meaning they have to be bigger. Number three is the solder. Thermoelectric coolers are not expected to handle great heat differences and so a lower melting point solder is used to join everything together. In thermoelectric generators, which are more efficient the greater the temperature difference, are expected to see a higher temperature of the hot side and so the solder is applied to withstand anywhere between 200 and 320 degrees centigrade. And the final, number four, is the way the modules are actually constructed. It's quite common to find thermoelectric generators made with aluminium flame sprayed hot side contacts, Teflon wire leads, floating ceramic plates, and a graphite sheet for thermal spreading. The solder used is likely to be a tin and antimony mix, and it'll be good up to about 240 degrees centigrade. When you're thinking about thermoelectric coolers, and typically the solder used is 138 degrees centigrade melting point, and it'll fail at around 100 to 110 degrees centigrade. The conductor leads are thicker because you're going to put more current in them, and there are lower temperature PVC insulation on the wire. So a quick recap, thermoelectric generators use the Seebeck effect, thermoelectric coolers use the Peltier effect, and although they are reversible, the method that they're made, how they're constructed, 
means that though you can get a thermoelectric cooler to produce power, chances are it won't be a lot and they will fail at higher temperatures. So given all I've said, why is it you find so many projects using this, which is the TEC12706 that you find in fridges or you can buy on eBay for about £2 each if you buy 10 of them? Well, it's simple. They're cheap. And, and if you're doing one module, then it'll work okay, as long as you don't want to do more than spin a motor or light an LED. But if you want to put together a whole load of modules, then you're going to be a little disappointed in this performance. What you need really, if you're that serious, is a thermoelectric generator like this one, which is the SP1848. And that will do a pretty good job. But of course, the extra manufacturing means you're going to find extra expense, which is why things like the Tegma 100 watt thermoelectric generator you put on your stovetop is in the region of $700 per unit. Of course, now the prices of TEGs have fallen so much that the SP1848, you'll get that for about £3, £54 if you buy three or four of them in one go. So the price has tumbled a long way and you're seeing people now using these because that's an approachable price. That's the price of perhaps the cheapest one I could find and they go up from there, £10, £20 beyond. And of course that expense is something people don't often want to have. So if you don't want to have that expense, you can use thermoelectric coolers, but expect a lower power output. If you want a higher power output, you're going to have to pay a little bit more for the thermoelectric generator version of these devices and use that. Using it's really simple. Instead of sticking in the TEC like you see in all of the projects, just swap that TEC out for the TEG unit and you'll get an improvement in what it is that you're doing. And the more you spend on your TEG, then the more improvement you're actually going to see at the end of the day. Anyway, I thought I'd spend time pointing all that out because a lot of people are very interested in this. Oh, by the way, those uh, fans that I showed at the beginning, they actually use TECs, but then they're dirt cheap. And so they do tend to fail and they're a bit cronky. One way to repair them is to swap them for a TEG. If you're going to put thermal paste on it, then put thermal paste on it. It will help. But better is a piece of graphite foil. If you use graphite foil, it's like a gasket. It will crunch down and make a very good thermal contact. Anyway, I thought I would share all that with you. I hope it was useful to people and interesting. And thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.